Today in the nation's capital, the second half of the NWSL season is in full swing with the Portland Thorns leading the way. The Portland Thorns, they are back on top of the NWSL standings. The Washington Spirit remain in the hunt, welcoming back a few familiar faces. While the Orlando Pride look to continue their playoff push, led by top scorer Sidney LaRue, it's the Spirit and the Pride coming up next. From Audi Field in our nation's capital, the Washington Spirit get ready to take on the Orlando Pride. This is the NWSL on CBS. After two games that were played yesterday, it's a pretty tight group of teams in terms of the standings. Portland with a slim two-point lead over the North Carolina Courage. But then after that, all these other teams have bunched up. Some of these teams still have as many as 10 games left in the regular season. Welcome, everyone, to our coverage today here on CBS alongside Lori Lindsay. I'm J.P. Della Camera. Plenty of stars on display today. Lori, let's start with Sydney LaRue of Orlando. Yeah, she certainly has been the difference maker for the Pride. Arguably playing the best soccer of her career. Seven goals on the season. She can play wide. She can play centrally. And she is a tremendous fan. Finisher. And if the Pride want to be a real championship contender this season, she has to continue to be their go-to player. And then for the Spirit, Ashley Hatch has been the most reliable player. A lot like Cindy LaRue can play anywhere on that front line. She has six goals on the season, but outside of her fighting the back of the net, it's been her defensive responsibilities that have been the key. She'll need to apply that pressure against Orlando tonight. Time now to meet the third member of our broadcast team, Marissa Pillow. The Washington Spirit have seen a lot of change over the last 12 days. Back on August 10th, it was announced head coach Richie Burke would be moved to the front office. Days later, he was put on administrative leave. That's when assistant coach Chris Ward became head coach Chris Ward. Ward told me any time that there is a coaching change midway through the season, there's always going to be a lot of emotions. In order to counter those emotions, he asked the team to follow a simple directive. Be hard to beat. He said if the team can rally around that idea, they can use that as their North Star going forward, getting them through this transition period and ultimately becoming a better team. Ashlyn Harris leading the Orlando Pride on the road where they've had a winning record. They'll take on the Washington Spirit third time during this regular season. Previous two games ended in draws. It's a big one here today at Audi Field in Washington, D.C. Washington Spirit playing at home versus the Orlando Pride. Time to get you to the starting lineups, and we start with the home side, Washington Spirit. And the Washington Spirit in their traditional 4-3-3. Same back line as their last game against Houston Dash. It'll be number 12, Andy Sullivan, the one that's going to pull the strings, dictate the tempo centrally, and then up top, number two, Trinity Rodman, back in the starting lineup. Four goals on the season. She'll look to pull this team out. Orlando's defense caused them a lot of issues. And then for Orlando Pride, in a little bit of a different formation in a 4-2-3-1, Allie Krieger would lead the back line with her composure and leadership, but then the front four would be all about their fluidity, especially number nine, Jody Taylor looking to stretch the team vertically. Bit of a different formation for the Orlando Pride under Becky Burley. They played in a couple. There's Marta. We welcome her back. She's always at the Olympics, always at the World Cups. At some point, she won't be, but right now, she's still playing at a very high level for both club and country. No one has scored more goals than Marta in World Cup competition, whether it's women or men. Two good goalkeepers on display today, Aubrey Bledsoe being one of those. Three shutouts on the year, 16 in her career, 2019 NWSL goalkeeper there. And Ashlyn Harris at the other end will be the team's captain. She's seven saves away from the all-time record from tying it with Nicole Barnhart. So two good ones on display today in goal. As we await kickoff, Tori Penso is our match referee. We are underway from Audi Field in the blue and red. It's Washington Spirit, Orlando Pride in white. Jody Taylor putting pressure on that first ball. It's Andy Sullivan. 
the spirit captain. Playing it back. More pressure there. Spirit will get to it. What are we expecting, Rory, in the early going? Well, I expect a fast-paced game for both of these teams, especially with the strikers that they have. Sydney LaRue for Orlando Pride, and then up top, Ashley Hatch for Washington Spirit. Both players being able to stretch the back line. That's one thing coming into this game that Coach Becky Burley for the Orlando Pride and Chris Ward for the Washington Spirit talked about these two teams wanting to tighten things up defensively, not giving away and conceding such soft goals throughout the run of play. Krieger won that first ball. Orlando will push it back. Allie Wiley, New Zealand International. Off on that right side. It's Vigiano's clearance. It's picked. And that ball was out on the near sideline. Belongs to Orlando on a throw in. Orlando with a winning road record, but neither team has been in good form lately, each winning just one of the last five games. Riley. Out of Stanford, we can say that about a lot of the players in the field today and in the league in general. One by the Spirit in the air, but taken down by Marta. With her Brazilian skill, will push it all the way to the left sideline. Who's on that far side? Says she likes to play as the number nine, but might be better off. Top of the left side, more freedom. And I like her out wide left the most, just being able to sneak in behind. She's deceptive with her runs. She works so hard on both sides of the ball. A lot of times defenders or the opposition lose track of her movement. Number nine, a little bit more predictable in that position. See how she does with this formation change today for the Orlando Pride. By the way, they're still missing Alex Morgan back from the Olympics, but carrying an injury. So they're hoping she'll be back soon. Some of the Olympians. Actually, all of them now have returned, but not to a starting lineup, not just yet. Some have. That ball goes out of play. Closed captioning for today's game is brought to you by Google. Orlando will try to push it forward. It's coming back. Marta. Krieger. Riley. Backline so experienced when you look at Krieger and Riley in particular. And Harrison goal. A good look at the different style of play from the Orlando Pride since Becky Burley's come in. A bit more fluidity, a bit more patience with the ball, giving her team the freedom to be able to play, make the decisions out on the field. Got into more of a direct and predictable style of play under Mark Skinner towards the middle of the season lost their way a bit now, having more fun, just being able to be creative. We'll see how they deal with the Washington spirit defensively against that. Ball going out of play. There is Sydney LaRue, seven goals this season. Tied now for the league lead after yesterday when Onomono scored twice. So those two each have seven. More goals for Sydney LaRue, the most she's had since 2013. And she told us when we spoke with her a couple days ago, this is the fittest she's felt playing with a different type of joy. Kids have given her a different perspective. Takes the game seriously, but not too seriously. Krieger will try the long ball. No one close. Takarada knocked it away. Washington in the counter. The look is long. Hatch is going for it. No foul, no flag. And that's going to roll out for a goal kick for Harris. In good positioning from Allie Krieger just to make sure that she keeps Ashley Hatch off the ball. Washington Spirit have the ability to spray the ball around, especially through Andy Sullivan. But they also have the ability to go direct with Ashley Hatch's run, even Trinity Rodman on the right-hand side, back in the starting lineup after getting some rest against Houston Dash last weekend. Ball was lost. They put Harris in a tough spot. Able to clear. Sullivan. Calculated pass. Houston on the right. That cross in. Hatch header right at Harris. Good job by all. In the wide areas for both of these teams is where they could have some joy. This time it's Tori Houston making a run out of the central area. Playing a good ball in. Ashley Hatch is getting separated from Allie Krieger. 
easy handled from Ashlyn Harris in the end. Luciano forced back. Good pressure from Bailey. The ball will go out between the benches. It'll be a throw in here for the Washington Spirit. We only had two days before Chris Ward had to put a game plan into action. He's had all week now, so maybe we'll see some things different. What can you do? Lori, when you have two days to prepare. Well, you definitely have some time to, uh, to rest and regroup. Really emotional week for the Washington Spirit a couple weeks ago, leading into that Houston Dash game on the road, coming away with a 2-2 tie, but now able to regroup, start to implement some of those things. And, and Chris Ward did say there is a plan in place already, a really good plan. Now it's about tweaking things, getting stingier defensively, see if they can shore things up to be able to get themselves in better positions going forward in the attack. Rodman sending one in on a true bounce right to Harris. JP, we're already seeing that early on from the Washington Spirit stepping up their pressure under Richie Burke. Not much of a pressing team. More of a team that was going to sit back to look to see if they can counter. Martha showed some good wheels there getting forward. Orlando was able to keep it. Riley is up on that right side. She'll get this. Riley, it's blocked. Spirit will take over to Sullivan on the outlet. Bailey up the middle. Kuhn and Rodman were there. Paige Nielsen. Nielsen scored last week, so did Houston. They actually had a 2 0 lead over the dash before the dash came back to tie. Stom. Up the field, that's blocked. Jody Taylor goes in two straight, draws that foul, free kick, Orlando. She certainly has been a good addition to the pride. Jody Taylor, familiar with this league, playing on several, several different clubs, alleviates some of that pressure in terms of Sydney LaRue having to be the only one to score goals, especially with Alex Morgan out with the injury, but also on international duty, playing in the Olympics with the United States. This gives him a different look up top. Krieger pass up the middle. Played off by Taylor. Right side line. Riley sprinting up from that right back position. Orlando does like to go wide, get those crosses in, so that's something the Spirit are concerned about defending. Yeah, especially centrally in the box, making sure that they stay tight on their players, bumping players when necessary, but also shutting down the service before it even gets into the box. Helferty's throw in. It's intended for McEwen. Marta on the ball. We'll push it across the way. Deflected ball in towards the box is cleared. It was Nielsen that got the first touch. Houston the second. Here is Washington on the ball with Hatch. Six goals on the year, all from inside the box. Nielsen. Keep it on the deck. Rodman in a rookie year, looking right side. Takarada, the right back, up forward. That cross denied, but leads to a corner. You see what Hatch has done this year with the goals. Doesn't matter what part of the body hits it, right? Two from each. And that's what you won. When we talked to her, the player that set a goal for herself, she wouldn't give us the goal, <laughs> the number of goals she wants to score this season, but has been the go-to player, the one that's leaded this, this line, the front line for the Washington Spirit. From that far corner, drilled towards the near post, never got there, but they'll have a second one coming up. It was last touched by Orlando. So they'll try it again. Sullivan's in the box, Staub in the box, and of course Hatch, among others. A lot of potential targets. Driven towards the middle, headed down, but wide. Spirit first on the ball. Sullivan. Nielsen. Helferty. Gave it up. Houston. Rodman 
That's tackled away. Rodman having a good rookie season was supposed to go to college last year in Washington State, but COVID canceled their season. So this is really the most she's played at this level, certainly, in a long time. Ball is played across, headed away. Not much room there, laid off. Good job by Sullivan. Played into the box, that's cleared up the middle. Taylor. Well done to get it wide. Hatch did a good job to keep that ball back there. And now it's cleared by Orlando too far, intended for Wiley. And a really bright start from the Washington Spear on both sides of the ball. Exactly what Coach Chris Ward would want from his team, especially looking at these two sides, JP. Not much separating them. Two points in the standings, both with the coaching changes that we've talked about. And then on both sides of the ball, having some players that can be really difference makers in this league. And so for the Washington Spirit, the onus is on them to get the three points, especially with how tight those standings are. You've got to collect your home points when you can. Three points, especially huge today. In seventh place at the start is Washington. They could jump up to fourth if they win. Orlando starting the day in fifth. The win puts them in third. That's how big this one game is. Also helps them in the tiebreaker with two draws, with head-to-head -head being the first one if they're tied in points at the end of the year. Sullivan. He's taken away. Good job from Yon's daughter. Becky Burley, the interim head coach of the Orlando Pride, was away on vacation, got a call from Amanda <laughs> Duffy, who leads that team in their organization, and Becky thought it was to get names <laughs> to replace Mark Skinner. Amanda had a name. It was Becky. <laughs> That's my favorite story, preparing to be a professor at the University of Florida as well, which I guess starts tomorrow. Yep, she still is. Doing double duty. She's enjoying it, she said. This is her fourth game in charge. They are 1-1-1. One, one, and one. And Like Chris Ward on the opposite side, they don't want to tear everything down. Here's a chance into the box, and that's wide of Harris. But that's the best chance and the first really good chance of this game. And it's a good run out of the midfield from Dorian Bailey. And it's his first touch right here that sets her up to be able to break away from Amy Turner and just sends that one wide of the far post. Good opportunity. Looking for her first goal of 2021. That's blocked. No foul given. Marta able to trap that ball nicely. And then knows what to do next. Out wide on that left side. Peterson. And now it's going to roll out of play. Throw in for Washington here in the 14th minute. And it's those runs out of midfield, JP, that could really cause some problems for Orlando Pride, especially with the attention that they'll have on Trinity Rodman, Ashley Hatch up top. The unpredictableness with those runs from deep. Pulling that back line out, forcing Orlando to have to decide if they're going to step or they're going to drop, could leave a lot of space centrally for Washington to occupy. That's was saying that to us the other day that they thought with their pace that they could get in behind them, but easier said than done. And it will be a balance of when to go direct, straight from the balls from the midfield or the back line, or have the balance of looking to circulate the ball around, see if they can pull out Orlando's defense and then play the slip balls in centrally. I think Krieger comfortable as a center back, also on the right side. Left it off. Long from Turner. Comforting with that clearance. His daughter chasing it, but it was Bailey who won it first. Robbins on that right side. Cutting ball ahead, then left. Carelessly, it's picked off. It's the Peterson pass ahead. Marta, Taylor. They'll settle in possession, but Giano's pass into the middle. Marta pulling the strings. That was a nice cutback. Laid it off. No give and go, though. It's pushed wide to the left. Peterson side. Cross coming in. Making that run. Riley was too far away. She was the closest to it. Riley and Hatch battle. Vigiano picks it up. 
Already Howard sending it in, and that's going to go wide, but that's as good as Orlando has looked in this opening half. Yeah, and it starts from Marta just getting herself free to be able to find Vigiano to open up that space out wide for Courtney Peterson. They've had a lot of success with Peterson getting higher up the field, whipping balls in. Chris Ward for Washington Spirit took note of that, said that's where they have to deny the service. Don't get themselves caught 1v1 in those wide channels. Pass up the middle, knocked away. Peterson did the job, but now it's turned over. Houston will settle. Helferty, that's blocked. She'll have to recover. Dorothy Howard, right sideline. Vigiano trying to get that inside where Taylor was. Kira on the left makes her run. That time she thought Hatch was breaking, but she wasn't. And those are the moments, though. McEwen just needs to settle herself down, look to see if she can play Hatch's feet. And that's the balance we're talking about, when to go direct, but also when to settle things. Look to see if you can find feet, get others involved in the game. Washington Spirit have the ability to go in numbers, get players forward, create overloads in the attack. Flicks forward to Taylor. Oh, Marta made a run, but was not noticed. In the circle, control regained by Orlando towards Vigiano. McEwen is closest. Helferty pulling it away from Taylor. Pass up off a reaching hatch. Comes back the other way. And right now for both sides, just too many unforced errors. Andy Sullivan for the Washington Spear and Gunny Unzada will be the players just to get themselves settled in. Ooh, nice by Rodman. Houston, couple of fakes. Knocked away from her. Can Orlando counter? Marta looks up. Numbers are not in her favor. A lot of blue and red jerseys going back to defend. It's not on, so they'll pull it back. Doherty Howard left it. Krieger. Riley. Back for Ali Krieger. U.S. national team veteran sends this one to the box, cleared up the middle towards Andy Sullivan. Looking to see if she can make that first pass. Again, it's not on, so she'll try to play it back. Not the ball she wanted. Spirit to get it. They're looking for that through ball, it's just not there. And credit to a Orlando Pride just getting numbers back, dropping quickly, denying those opportunities. And if there's no pressure on the ball, that's exactly what you have to do as a back line. Just drop and absorb any of that pressure that's coming your way. Bailey didn't miss a beat. Lost the shoe. They're just delaying the restart. Play back to goal from Blood. So let's go downstairs and hear from Marissa Pillow. Washington's Chris Ward just told me that the constant threat in each of the Spirit's chances on net recently has been the players taking the initiative when they're on the ball. He said, we have a lot of different game changers and people who are able to make an impact on offense. And he said, they're showing the initiative to make something happen. Furthermore, he's very happy with how they are playing on defense because that's creating even more opportunities on the counter. Both coaches, Lori, told us that yesterday. They want to give the players a little bit more say in the game. Let them solve the problems as this ball is played across. And in particular, JP, on the defensive side, when to press, but also when just to sit back, get tight as a unit, and deny any sort of central passes through the lines. Turner tried to play it back, fouled by Rodman. Turner's another one of those veterans in the back. Didn't mention her earlier, but Nice resume that she has as well from playing for Manchester United and Liverpool, among others. Rodman's getting a warning from Tori Penso, our match referee. And Rodman, one of those most fouled players in the league, giving a little bit back to one of the defenders. Taste of their own medicine. For those watching that think that's a familiar name, father, Dennis Rodman. Had a great NBA career. Ball is played long. Orlando's able to get to that second ball on the turn. 
Marta. So good with her feet. If you've never watched her play, you've missed one of the all-time greats in the sport. It's been fun to watch just the evolution of her game. Started off as a number nine, higher up the field. Early on in her career, has dropped a bit lower, more of a playmaker now. We're seeing her in that role with the Orlando Pride. Last couple of seasons, playing underneath Jody Taylor, the one that will stretch and play more vertical. Hopefully open up the space to allow for Marta to be able to dictate and help pull the strings centrally. Yeah, she's had to adjust her game. We followed her career since she was a teenager, even at the national level. Now she's 35, but still, as we said before, able to play at this high of a level. While adjusting her game, Vigiano sending it all the way across. Can it find Peterson? It can. This time, Orlando have several going forward, at least six, maybe seven there. It's broken up. Here's the danger, though. Everyone committed. Rodman full speed ahead. Joined by two teammates. They're on the chase. Rodman pulls up short. Has runners. Now goes for goal. Save Harris. Rodman rebound off the crossbar. She had two good looks at it. Harris made one save. The crossbar made another. Helpfordy as Washington tries to keep that pressure going. Orlando's able to clear it. Good. What a fantastic individual effort from Trinity Rodman. Washington Spirit doing exactly what they want, denying Courtney Peterson being able to serve the ball, and they're quickly into transition in the other side with Trinity Rodman running at the back line. Just the first one to react off her initial attempt. Set long by Nielsen, and it'll bounce to Harris. What have you been most impressed with this year with Rodman? Well, I think it's just this year, her ability to go direct, but also just understanding where the pressure is, understanding her ability to take players on. She gets her own rebound. How that does not find the back of the net, I do not know. She knows that is a golden opportunity to put her team up 1-0. But she's been dynamic. She's been confident in her play. So 19, by the way, here's Vigiano. Has an angle, shoots it low, but Bledsoe gives no rebound. But something broke down there. She was wide open. This is why channels at both teams, even though they want to be mindful of, are willing to give that space away. Want to clog things up in the middle of the field, where a lot of the numbers are, where they can have the most success. We talked about Gunny, Young's daughter for the Orlando Pride and her ability of just a screen and set play with an Andy Sullivan for the Washington Spirit being able to do the same thing. Washington will send this one forward. Takarada leaves it off. Spirit will try to get some numbers forward. Rodman. Pushed wide. That ball was deflected out. It's gonna be the third corner for the Washington Spirit. And of no JP, one of the players that we are seeing in the starting lineup for the Washington Spirit, Ashley Sanchez. Typically starts, plays almost every minute for the Spirit. Chris Ward going for McEwen up top instead, rotating players, making sure that they're managing their minutes, especially going into this critical part of the season. Corner from the far side of the stadium. Closer to the middle, headed once, second ball. He's headed down, but now cleared. Second ball is cleared farther upfield. He's closer to Taylor, but she had no help with her. Rodman's cutting ball in. Denied. Marta. Still the one that they're playing through. This afternoon, 4 o'clock kickoff. Hot and humid, sticky conditions in our nation's capital. Zeros on the scoreboard, 25th minute. Krieger. Wiley. That's tackled away. He's Rodman there defensively. Good work from Rodman, the young player. Both sides of the ball for such a young player, ability to take players on, as you were asking, what I've been most impressed with, but also just her composure. Tough for young players to step into the league and make such an impact, and she has been electric. 
opens up space for other players as well with how much attention she gathers on her for her opponents. This daughter has been terrific for Orlando this year. Started every game, leads him in minutes, hasn't missed a minute. Ball is loose, spirit territory, gathered in. Sullivan, left side. Houston. Slowing the play down on this left side. Helferty, the left back, high upfield. Nowhere to go. Now she'll slot it to Rodman using physical play. No foul given. Rodman setting it in off the post again. Looked like she had Harris beat at that near post. Harris had most of it covered, but not 100%. And it's great work from Helferty to beat Vigiano initially to set Rodman up, and then Rodman just bodying Ali Riley off that ball. Another one off the post, unfortunate for the young striker. Was denied there. Doherty Howard blocked, collected by the Spirit. Certainly had the better of the chances, the Spirit. Were not for Harris and a crossbar and a goalpost, they're up. Well, they're doing a good job of reading the play and what's being available from the Orlando Pride. Is it on over the top directly? If not, just being patient. Now it'll be about just settling things down. These misplaced passes, unforced errors that are happening in the final third. Cleaning those up and then the execution will come. Here's another good look of just turning rod and just getting the better of Allie Riley. No one steps tight. And then she goes herself again. And I don't think Ashlyn Harris expected her to come right from the shot herself, and it was beaten at initially, fortunately, off the post again. Dorney Howard back for Turner, played collegially at Hofstra in New York. Allie Krieger. Back and forth they go. Scoreless opening half with the 28th minute. Third meeting of the regular season for these two teams. Trying to move up in the standings. Top six make the playoffs. And right now, Orlando's in the playoff spot. Washington is not. And Orlando throw in, far side. Possession kept, Krieger. Last two World Cup teams in the U.S. Upfield it comes, blocked, taken away. Helferty. Bailey. Rodman. This time on this left side, second time. Second straight time she's been up on this left side. Houston, good job. Long cross over the head of McEwen. Houston played in the 150th game for this franchise. Last week scored a nice goal against Houston. She's been an integral part to the Washington Spirit, especially when you look at this team and the makeup, a young side for the Washington Spirit. Important to have Andy Sullivan and Tori Huster. Good job they've done during the international break in terms of the Olympians being gone. Potentially could see Emily Sonnet, Kelly O'Hara later in this game from the United States national team coming off the bronze medal. So we're going to see some rotation, maybe not so much today, but once these Olympians are back in full swing, many of them were starters. Give this Washington Spirit team a, a different look. For the most part, outside of Alex Morgan for their Orlando Pride, this is their team. This is their starting 11. Ball is over the head of Aubrey Bledsoe. But also, Julia Rotter, Swedish international, coming back. Most likely won't see her today. She just got back into town the latter part of this week. With three starters for the Washington Spirit. Just continues to push the competition level, rotate players around. And we talk about how critical the second part of the season is and how tight the standings are. Important players coming in and really push to get into that top six for the playoffs. Sullivan, Huster lost it there. On the turnover, Vigiano, that's a nice idea. Doherty Howard, first on the ball on the right. That cross, not close enough. Cleared by Huster. 
missed Rodman in the air. Hatch is chasing. Picked and then picked again. Jon Stodder. Marta. Cultured left foot. Peterson. Line on that far side. Washington to throw in for Orlando. Past the half hour mark. The better chances have come for the Washington Spirit so far. But no reward yet. And this is my only question about how Orlando Pride plays because we have not called Sydney LaRue's name very much in these first 30 minutes. How do they get her involved in the game? When they were more direct early on this season, Really voted well for her and her ability to get in behind, but also press opposing teams. A player that can play on both sides of the ball. Now, out wide, not finding her on the switch as much as possible. Hydration break here. That means we're going to take one as well. It is scoreless. We're in the 32nd minute from Washington, D.C. Coming right back. This is from last night. Olympians play here. Yes, they do. How about Megan Rapino? All she did last night, two goals, both on penalty kicks and an assist. You see Rose LaBelle and others also there. Nice to see the back. Quinn is also back. Quinn, part of a gold medal team. How about Canada winning gold? Oh, and, and, and not a surprise. This is a team that came into the tournament saying we want to change the color of the medal. They did just that. And a nice little celebration from the Orlando Pride for McLeod, the goalkeeper. There were four Olympians on each team that left. Some of them came back earlier, like Takarada's already played in a couple of games. This is their third. The teams that went out early obviously got their players back, and the longer teams went, and then some teams gave them a bit of a break, as you could understand. It's a long journey to go to Japan and then come back. You're recovering, and now you've got to come back and play in games that are so meaningful. But you expect the impact. We saw Megan Rapino last night scoring two goals that put them ahead, and two game winners, essentially, three to two. And that's the impact that you want from those players coming back in, rejuvenating their teams, bringing them even more life. Helfrey all the way upfield after that hydration break. And left side, Rodman started on the right, now has ended up left. Quick shot. Again, that's wide. But that's the energy you want from the Washington Spirit, especially coming out of that water break, immediately trying to get a ball into the box, putting Orlando Pride under pressure. And talk about the onus being on the Spirit, playing here at home, getting points. Downstairs we go again to Marissa. Orlando's assistant coach Seb Hines told me the Pride need to start exploiting space out wide more. Orlando wants their forwards to make more wide runs directly at Washington's defense. Because Washington is very front foot dominant right now, Orlando will look to draw their defense out and play in that space behind. Why hasn't that happened so far, Lori? Well, I think it's the misplaced passes. They've slowed things down when when they haven't needed to, but also credit to the Washington Spirit just getting numbers in behind, calming it down, slowing it down when needed. In the space, the look was for LaRue. But the Pride are good when they get the ball out wide. We saw a great header from Jody Taylor against Portland to put them up 1-0 last weekend off a great ball off of the left foot of Courtney Peterson. Well, that was discussed in the game plan, right? We're talking about Orlando using the width, wanting to make sure they could deny those crosses, but also make sure you're marking properly in the box. And that's where Gunny Yun's daughter, even Megan DeHoy Howard, have to be the outlet to be able to circulate the ball around, force the Washington Spirit to have to move defensively from side to side. Haven't done it yet. We've seen them switch it once, but they haven't come back around. It's been predictable. Washington Spirit doing well to their game plan, just making sure they're tight in the box or eliminating any of those service in. Forward pass from Houston. Just trying to get to it. Stoder back there doing some nice work, but it's a throw in for Washington. They're going with a short throw. Try to move it out. Went out of play instead. Another throw in for the Spirit. To 
Deflected ball, fighting Hatch. Able to turn. Right side, ball coming in and across. McEwen got a touch. Sullivan, not enough on that cross as it's cleared. Again by Orlando, it's a throw in for Washington. And I like that look for Mandy Sullivan though, just looking to lay it back on top of the six yard box instead of trying to float one in. It'd be easily grabbed from Ashlyn Harris. Hofer D trying to go herself. That was ambitious, but not a bad thought. See the angle she had. No, especially with how well Orlando has done outside of the two opportunities from Trinity Rodman. They're dropping back. Their initial defense is strong. So now can you get runners coming in from behind, whether it's out wide from Helferty that we just saw, or even the midfield of Andy Sullivan or Tori Huster. Seventh straight start for Helferty out of Boston University. Their season was canceled last year due to COVID. Helferty will play it back. Stop. Fouls given there. Sullivan went down. Fouls on Allie Riley. Four World Cups for her, four Olympics. Free kick when play resumes for Washington. Sam Stop out of Clemson. Kept it low on the deck. Rodman trying to freelance here. Trinity Rodman's pass denied. Kicks back up. I thought Sydney LaRue with the defensive work told us the other day how much she enjoys that defensive part of the game. Has to run all day. Both sides of the ball. Here's Marta. Towards the middle. Wants an option. Pulled it back. Finds one there. Just not enough movement from the Orlando Pride once they break free. Marta had some space in front of her, but just stagnant in their movement up top. It allows the Washington Spear to get in behind, slow things down, and force them to go backwards. Figured it well there to take that ball away. Otherwise, it could have been a break. Two on one the other way. Here's the Riley cross headed away. Marta on it. One step over. She'll get it wide. Peterson. Floats one up. No runner there. Alfred Ball is easily given away, too easily. Vigiano to the right. Jones still there. Riley in line. Should be their first corner kick. The quality of the ball from the Orlando Pride right now has to be better. Just floating balls in. It's exactly what the Washington Spirit is expecting. They got numbers in the box, making sure that they can clear anything out of danger. Last attempt there, just a little combination play to get Ali Riley in to force this corner better from the pride. But overall, diversifying their service and their movement up top is going to be key, especially going into these last five minutes of this half. Helfley helping out at the near post. LaRue Taylor, a couple of the potential targets for Orlando. Martin will strike. A footed corner to the middle, headed away from goal. Krieger's on the chase, cleared by Washington. We're almost at 40 minutes, and your point before about Sydney LaRue not being involved in the game, they've not been able to find her. One would think that's a key for them if they're going to get three points today. And actually, as you just mentioned that, we see Jody Taylor floating out wide left, and it's Sid LaRue that's going to be occupying that more number nine position. We'll see how long that lasts. Just getting Sydney LaRue in behind, and. Right now, I like the patience from Orlando Pride, but can they go direct? Because there is a mismatch, especially if Sydney LaRue stays centrally, a mismatch between her pace amongst Paige Nielsen and Sam, Sam Staub, the two center backs for the Washington Spirit. Can they catch them out? Northampton might have had a glimpse. That's what the team does when she scores, so they feed off of her effort. But that's how we saw it drift more to the middle and Taylor went wide. So maybe that's something to look forward to the rest of this half. Maybe, maybe certainly in the second half. I imagine Becky Burley, that will be a talking point going in because not enough of the play, not enough of the emphasis going forward as we typically have seen them. Don't Peterson 
Taylor makes a run, and it's over Bledsoe. Taylor applauded that, though, that effort towards goal. And why not? We've seen Peterson take her chances from that angle. Looks like Beth Bledsoe is trying to cheat a little bit to see if she can grab the cross, and then Peterson gets her head up. Oh, it does take a deflection. Almost catches Bledsoe off her line. But that's better from Orlando Pride, finding those wide areas, getting Courtney Peterson higher up the field. Going to whip the ball in behind the back line of the Washington Spirit. Peterson has started every game this year. Nice pick by Marta. And now it's played forward. We're really in. The shot is stayed by Bledsoe and another one. Right off the side netting. But that's the danger of LaRue, her first chance. Almost a goal. And that is why you want Sydney LaRue sitting on the back shoulder of the Washington Spirit, just looking for this through ball. Perfectly weighted, and it's a good touch from Sydney LaRue to set herself up. Wide open in the middle of the park for Vigiano to be able to pick out Sydney LaRue is a close call in terms of almost being offside. That corner to the middle, Bledsoe spilled it, but recovers. That's a through ball with Sydney LaRue. Tori Houston almost makes the play, but well done from Bledsoe to stand her ground, come off her line, close down the angle, massive save, and then to close it down again after Sydney LaRue gets her own rebound. Best opportunity of the game for the Orlando Pride. Two goals in her last three games for Sydney LaRue. That's been the biggest difference, JP, of the season for Sydney LaRue, playing her best soccer so far. She's fitter, but she's hungry for goals, and she's a great finisher when you get her in and around the net. Unfortunate to not find the back of the net in that last opportunity. All she needs is one chance. She had it, but Bledsoe that time came up big. Off Takarada. Will swing it wide left. But the last couple of times up the field, they have gotten LaRue more involved. Krieger, Turner. Jon's daughter. Allie Krieger getting it wide. Riley doubled up there. Marta scrambling over there to get to this ball. She's been all over. Marta cutting. Still on the dribble. Nice cutting ball, but can't see the assistant referee on this near side. The flag never did go up. But it looked like it was going to. We thought it was. Coming up at halftime, NWSL headlines. There were quite a few this week. I'll show you who made the cut on those. First up, highlights and stats. This was a very big news week. Don't want to spoil the lead, right? But it's a very <laughs> big news week in the NWSL. So now this is very important here. We're in the final minute. Don't know yet about stoppage time, but this is striking distance for Orlando in the set piece. Yeah, it certainly is. And with Marta and her ability to strike off of set pieces, dangerous area, whether she goes herself on goal or looks to play this ball right in behind that back line of the Washington Spirit. First for the taking, three in the wall for the Spirit. The great Marta striking. She was going near post and didn't miss by a whole lot. Had the right power, had the right pace, just bends it too much. Bledsoe has it covered in the end. But why not late in this half? Or just go yourself, see if you can at least force Bledsoe to come up with a rebound. Just pulls it past that top corner. Nielsen walks it up. Back to Bloodsell. Short ball ahead. Don't want to give the ball away there. Stoner got to it. Doherty Howard. Peterson forward towards LaRue's side. Picked off now by the Spirit. Hatch. The dribble. Putting it out wider. Now towards Robin, who was taken out. Robin now back on that right side. As that ball drifts out, but the foul was given. The yellow card is out. And you can just tell from the movement of Trini Rodman how dangerous she can be. Just a little cut to come back, to drop back to the ball, but then gets in behind, forcing Amy Turner to come up, get the yellow card. First booking of this half, which is almost over. In the second minute of stoppage time. Free 
kick at this end. From distance. Goalless at the moment. Played short. Paige Nielsen drives one up. That's headed away. Brought down. Sent right back in and over. Ashton Harris. Not a bad idea for Mandy Sullivan. Just a quick touch to set herself up. And then hits it first time. She makes good contact, but it's always rising in the end. And there's the first touch for Andy Sullivan. And that's a close one, just sends it over the bar. Just over the outstretched fingertips of Ashlyn Harris. Not much left in this opening half from Audi Field. From Harris, Takarada, second ball won by Orlando, and then the clearance upfield. LaRue past the two minutes of stoppage. LaRue's pass slightly behind. Washington got to it, but that's going to do it. That will be the last kick of this opening half. No goals in the first half, Lloyd, but enough excitement in both ends. Yeah, certainly has, especially with Trinity Rodman for the Washington Spirit. They'll be happy with some of those opportunities, but upset with not being able to put at least one of them away. Expect some changes, though, coming at the half. Can they continue to push the pace, continue to raise the, the level of their game? And then Orlando Pride doing well enough to keep it 0-0 and then started to wear themselves into the game late in this first half. Anything surprise you in the first 45 minutes? Well, one, that we didn't see suddenly LaRue get on the ball more than we did in those last five minutes. But once they started to get her on the ball, we saw how dangerous she can be and how much energy she brings to the Orlando Pride. Might see more of it in the second half. Come back with us. Halftime straight ahead after this commercial break. It is the Washington Spirit and the Orlando Pride in this important NWSL match. Scoreless after 45 minutes from our nation's capital. Welcome back, everyone. We're at halftime in our nation's capital, the game between the Washington Spirit and the Orlando Pride. Time to take a look at headlines this week in the NWSL. We start with Laura Harvey returning as a club coach with O.L. Reign. Great to have her back, coming off of being assistant coach with the United States that won bronze in Tokyo, but a lot of respect within this Reign club and also adds to the female coaches amongst the league. Player news, how about goalkeeper A.D. French going back home? Oh, and it's exciting to have her back. A big pickup for Kansas City. Not only is she going home, but she also had to start to think that this is a bigger picture for the league in terms of expansion draft and who they can protect and who they cannot. And those are two big headlines. We saved the biggest headline for the end. One of AD's national team teammates, Carly Lloyd, has announced her retirement from the game, both from club and country. That retirement will take effect at the end of this calendar year. And what a legend and what a special opportunity for all of us, not only to be able to call games, but also be able to see her play in some of the remaining schedules, not only for the NWSL and her team, Gotham FC, but also for the national team this fall. She was honored last night on the road at the Oral Reign game. You'll have a chance to watch Carly again on the CBS Sports Network. Those are the remaining games for Carly Lloyd that you can watch here on CBS. And on Wednesday, a big one on the network, young Olivia Motri, who scored a goal the other night, taking on Carly Lloyd, living legend. Check us out, CBS Sports Network, Wednesday for that big game, 10.30 Eastern. Forty-five minutes in the books, scoreless between Orlando and Washington from Audi Field in our nation's capital. Welcome back, everyone, to the NWSL and CBS with Lori Lindsay. I'm JP Della Camera. We got Lori's comments about the first half going to break. How about what could change in the second half? Well, I think we could potentially see some substitutions. Ashley Sanchez, potentially Kelly O'Hara and Emily Sonnet for the Washington Spear. That alone will allow them to push the pace, something that we talked about, and something they'll want to look for to get points at home in the second half. And then for the Orlando Pride, continue to do much of the same that we saw in the last 15. Get the ball wide, find Sidney LaRue more often, and then 
Courtney Peterson serving balls in. There's a good look early on for the Washington Spear with Trinity Rodman getting in behind, creating her own opportunities, almost getting the rebound, hitting this one off the post. It will continue to be the Trinity Rodman show, this time linking up with Helferty on the left-hand side, getting past Allie Riley, and just another one off the post, unfortunate for the young striker. But then it would be the Orlando Pride starting to work their way into this game. Vigiana with a good look for Sydney LaRue. One of the first real opportunities for Orlando Pride, especially Sydney LaRue, but Abu Bleso, great save to keep this one 0-0. And then Marta in the end, just sending that one wide of the top post late in the first half. It seemed like Washington had more shots and more chances, less possession, but you could argue that Washington did more with their possession than Orlando. Did. I think they certainly did, especially with the variation of going forward, whether it's direct in the Trinity Rodman or keeping possession and trying to pull out the Atlanta Pride defensively. Some returning Olympians are on the bench. Will they play in the second half? Come back with us. We'll find out together right now. This one is scoreless. Washington on Orlando after 45 minutes. The second half after the break. Welcome back, everyone, to our coverage of the NWSL here on CBS Sports. Scoreless at halftime between the Washington Spirit and the Orlando Pride. And before we get back to the action, let's take a little time to get to know a little more about Tony Presley from the Orlando Pride with today's player profile presented by MasterCard. Incredible things on her resume. She's also a breast cancer survivor, used to play for the U.S. Under-23 team. What can you tell us about Tony Presley as a player? Well, I had the privilege of playing with Tony Presley and the, just the calmness that she brings as a center back position and just a wonderful teammate and, and one of the reasons why even though she's not playing as many minutes as I'm sure she want to but still an integral part of this team in terms of the energy she has on the bench and that will be important going forward in this season. She's available sub but certainly both benches are pretty deep when you consider the Olympians have returned and in some cases because of a, a change in the starting 11 we've got a player that started last game that is now on the bench and available to come in, someone like a Ashley Sanchez, for example. Yeah, and this game is just calling for her ability, somebody that can pop off the back line of Orlando Pride's defense, help mix it up, create numbers overload in the middle of the field, and then look to see if she can spring Ashley Hatch and even Trinity Rodman going forward. See if there are any changes. Sonnet's in that huddle, so you're assuming she's coming in. Is there anyone else in there? We'll take a look. She played in a couple of games in the Olympics. I think it's important for these coaches to bring players in. I mean, if they could start, fine. But for the most part, break them in slowly, right? 45 here before they try to go 90. Well, 100% in terms of managing the players in the minutes, but also just managing your team as a whole as well. These players have put in a number of minutes why these got players were gone for international duty. And just to take them out of the starting lineup, you know, for morale, it is about just easing everybody in, making sure they know their roles and articulating that to each player. Ken O'Hara starter in the Olympics, as she has been at the World Cup level. And then Emily Sala, we mentioned she played in a couple of games in the Olympics gets in there too. So Paige Nielsen is out as is Anna Helferty. So that is where those two players will be slotting in for Washington. Sana will take over for Nielsen in the middle and for now anyway O'Hara will be on that left side. She can also play right. That's where she plays for the U.S. for the most part. Takarada will stay in the white. Second half is underway on the ball that's pushed to the left. It's Orlando in white if you're just joining us. Blue and red uniforms belonging to the home side, Washington Spirit. Could be a really fun matchup on that left-hand side with Kelly O'Hara coming in against her former Stanford teammate, Allie Riley. Kelly O'Hara having the fresh legs. LaRue, oh, she tried to find Marta. Cleared away for Hatch. She'll lay it off. Rodman, she was a force. Trinity Rodman in that first half. Unlucky not to have at least one goal, if not more. Takarada. He's got the whistle from Tori Penso. The ball is turned over to Orlando. They will have this free kick. 
Orlando under new ownership, the Wolf family, who own the Minnesota Vikings, recently took them over and Orlando City of Major League Soccer. And so setting things up, there's two in the wall at the moment. From long distance, Marta almost delivered it, settled by Taylor, couldn't get the shot off. Takarada down that right side with that sprint. McEwen got to it. Good job. Has to wait a little bit for help. She's 1v1 at the moment. Peterson did a great job of winning it. And then Orlando gives it away. Good work from Trinity Rodman to help out, see if she can get there to help support. McEwen had done well to body off and get herself into that attacking position. here for Takarada. Gathered in by LaRue. Marta. Slow ball to the right. Riley thought about playing it back to Harris. Instead, it's going forward. Jennifer Yon's daughter. Good cut there. Sana pushing it forward on this right side. McEwen slotting it, nice tuck in pass. Rodman, edge of the box, pulling it back on her own, knocked away. Orlando will try to play it up the wing. Marta. Gaining the halfway line. Forced back by Takarada. She still kept that ball in play. Look at this. Jordy Howard. Side towards Riley. Tucked in, then the offside flag up on Jody Taylor. We've been talking about Sydney Lou a lot in that opening half. For more on Sydney, let's go downstairs to Mercer Hill. I caught up with Orlando's Becky Burley right after she spoke with forward Sydney LaRue at the half. And Burley told me simply, LaRue needs to touch the ball more. She wants LaRue to find more pockets of space in front of Washington's back line instead of being positioned right up against the defense. In general, the pride need to be more patient in the final third with Burley saying, when we can connect, we can be dangerous. And they can be dangerous. We saw that in the last 15 minutes of that half. And it will be about Sydney, Sydney LaRue picking and choosing her times. When is she trying, gonna try to look in behind or when will she try to tuck in and help keep possession and get faced up and run at the back line herself and amazing she had so few touches when Orlando had the big edge in possession here's Rodman reflected Hatch pulling it back picked up on the dangerous spot let's get tangled up and the foul on Sullivan not about bad foul from Andy Sullivan, just a stall play, knowing that they need to get numbers behind. And Chris Ward would be happy with this foul, talking about getting tighter defensively, having that mentality to shut things down when needed. Sullivan, a terrific player, team captain, only missed one game this year due to a red card she had picked up. Stalled after it defensively, lost it there. Pagiano and she were battling out for a goal kick for Aubrey Bledsoe. Mentioned third time these clubs have met. They've been low scoring games, right? 1 1 in those games and here. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Chances, but no goals. We've gotten a good picture of why both teams good on the ball, looking to see if they can switch, find those wide channels but also just near misses as well. And the goalkeeper's coming up with some big saves. Free kick coming up for Orlando. They did not make any changes at halftime. Block. Houston. Rodman. Trinity Rodman. Look at the pace back from Peterson. But Rodman got the shot off and just missed wide far side. She put it into another gear as fast as Peterson was. Rodman was even one step faster. And it's just so good from Trinity Rodman, always knowing where the space is, looking to see if she can pull herself wide. No one behind gets past Peterson. And this is where she can be better, though, getting her head up, seeing it, where her teammates are, picking out a teammate. This is going to be difficult to beat. 
Ashlyn Harris on that far post. So she, can she pick out a teammate or at least put her foot on it and then look to combine quickly for a better opportunity on goal? Imagine what a four-year college career could have done for her game. She's only 19 and she's getting regular minutes with Washington and doing well. And doing really well, continuing to find ways that she can be even more effective in the game. And we talked about not starting the last game against Houston. Chris Ward opting to give her a little bit of rest to manage her body, knowing that she needs this, or they need her in the long period of this season. Over the top towards Taylor. If she can get behind the defense. She's a lethal striker. Bailey. Back for Sonnet. Play multiple positions for club and country. Takarada. Sonnet. Bailey. Already the confidence and just decision making from Emily Sonnet has helped her team a bit more clear on how they want to go, taking the space early on in this second half, driving to look to see if she could play Trinity Rodman in. So what the Olympians will help in terms of their team and just a different gear, different look. Washington now on the back foot. This ball is played wide on the right side. The cross towards Taylor. Didn't get there. Spirit looking to move it out. O'Hara drops it back. And stop and put it. Now she's going to leave it. Leave it for Bledsoe. Just joining us, two changes made at halftime for the Washington Spirit. Welcoming back Olympians Kelly O'Hara and Emily Sonnen who came back with bronze medal. This national team have four games to go before the calendar new year ends. Probably see some changes and some NWSL players making one of those rosters. Dr. a former coach of this league, is a very strong proponent of this league, and he scouts it religiously. I expect a ton of changes coming in, maybe not in these initial games of the victory tour from the bronze medal that they won in Tokyo, but after that, start to overhaul, bring in some of the fresh faces, faces and you have to think Trinity Rodman, potentially Ashley Sanchez, Andy Sullivan in particular from the Washington Spirit could get a good look. Doherty Howard. Push back. Vigiano's pass. Try to get it through. Could not. Spirit back on the ball. It's too slow for Hatch, but she was able to get to it. Back to Takarada. Sonnet doubled up there. It was dangerous, but Takarada had enough pace on it. And it is hot and humid, JP, so that will take its toll, especially in the second half. But those are the moments right there where Takarada has the ball. There has to be better options for the Washington Spirit. Can they catch them on the break quicker? They're on the move on that far side. And in the middle it comes. Hatch laid it off. Hatch again, shooting it. It's blocked, but it'll fall easily to Harris on the distribution. Bit too much on it, but Orlando will still come away with the ball. It's LaRue. Sydney on the move. Nice cutting ball towards Taylor. Needed a bit better angle on that pass as Sonnet cleared it away. Good recovery. Well done, Throw it for Orlando. Peterson. Turner. Allie Krieger. The 56th minute. Zeros on the board. Orlando. Better numbers with possession. Washington Spirit. Better numbers with the shots. Chances created. Turner. Peterson was wide open. Instead, Turner will go the other way to Krieger. So much of that possession was led by Marta in that first half. That was picked, telegraphed. Hatch, the run made. McEwen, 1v1 at the moment. It's going to roll back to Harris, and the foul goes the other way against Washington. And it was an excellent step from Kelly O'Hara out of that back line to read the play all the way. One pass into Hatch, and then the second one into McEwen is her first touch, though, that lets her down. Takes it right into Amy Turner. 
those little executions in the final third for the Washington Spirit that are letting them down. McEwen, now Houston. McEwen's been a bit more active here in this half, and Houston thought there was somebody on that side. There was no one there. There was no one in McEwen's spot, but she had gone into the middle. Ashton Harris will play it short. 57th minute, zeros on the board. The game in the NWSL standings, the only game being played today after the two that were played yesterday. Ball played in. Easy one for Harris. For North Carolina yesterday, Loy, a 4 0 win. Jessica McDonald, 50th goal. Congrats to her, the fourth player in NWSL history to do that. Second American player. Lynn Williams coming back, not missing a beat. No. Scoring a goal. Amy Rodriguez, the big trade for Paul Riley's side from Kansas City. That's working out. Ball played in. Blitzo off her line. No danger. Kelly O'Hare on the left. Three World Cups, three Olympics on her resume. Again, that's in between a couple of players not reading it the same. Well, and that's when the movement has to be more decisive. See McEwen starting to wear down a bit, getting a little bit heavy with her movements. Looks like Dory Bailey thought she was going to check back to the ball to buy herself a little bit of time and space. Getting close, closer to the hour mark. As Turner finds Krieger. Marta. Amy Turner drives it left. Peterson brought it down well. LaRue towards Peterson, had to angle a run, receives, sends in the low cross. Taylor out. Doherty Howard, low shot blocked. It's still loose in the box, and Washington able to deal with it from the Sonic clear. Orlando will keep that ball in play. Doherty Howard off that left foot. Second ball, LaRue. Finding an open player, Vigiano, it's deflected, but right to Bledsoe. And better ideas from Orlando Pride, and a lot of that has to do with the positioning of Sydney LaRue, not just sitting out wide, popping off that back line, exactly what Becky Burley was talking about. Now she's able to receive the ball, quick little interplay to allow for Peterson to get higher up the field, and then they have options, whether it's playing the service into the box or looking to combine on top of the 18-yard. McEwen. Peterson is still down the other way as McEwen's shot goes right at goal. Hadn't seen her because our view was blocked, but on the last play that was upfield, they didn't stop play because there was no head injury. So the referee does not have to stop play there, but right now, let's see if she's going to. Of course, they could always take a hydration break too at this time the heat and humidity of our nation's capital. What a career Ashlyn Harris has had. She used to play for the Washington Spirit, and Aubrey Bledsoe, her counterpart, used to play for Orlando in, a, in an NWSL that's still in its infancy, right? Not even 10 years old. You see a lot of player movement from club to club. Certainly, but over the last several years, Ashton Harris, such an important part to this Orlando Pride team, consistently shows up in goal, making big saves, keeping her team. And that's exactly what you want from a world-class goalkeeper, a keeper that can come in, keep you in the game when necessary, but expect that on the other end for your strikers and, and midfielders to put it away. And while that was not an official hydration break, players did take advantage of that. Peterson is up by the fourth official. See She's able to come back into the game. Still no changes from Orlando's standpoint. Two changes made at halftime by Washington. Turner will hold. Vigiano. 
Peterson still up on the fourth official. They're not coming in just yet. Meanwhile, Orlando has Kylie Strom up. So they are going to make a change. JP, just looking at the back line of the Washington Spirit, this is why it's so important to have Emily Sonnen, Kelly O'Hara leading the line. They're able to squeeze the game more, not drop. And it's allowing for Washington to step up their pressure, pick off balls earlier and higher up the field from Orlando Pride, something that we didn't see quite often or throughout that first 45 minutes. Not sure what took so long for Peterson to be acknowledged to come back in. Coaching staff was asking for her to come in. She was asking, but just now she came back on the field. We'll see how long she can continue. Only 23 years of age, making a contribution to Orlando. Don't stutter. Ran out of room on that side, but was last touched by Washington. So it's an Orlando throw in. Not just Strom, but also Phoebe McLernan will be coming in. So Orlando's about to make a double switch when they can. Turner. Pushed all the way back. Allie Krieger on the move. That's picked off. Rodman back again on that left side. She can play just about anywhere. That pass is blocked. But picked up, Houston leads it. Robin in the box, shooting it, side netting. She had other options, three making runs in the box. And that will be the evolution of her game. She does everything exactly right to get her and herself into these great positions. But then it's just the wrong decision in the end. She's hungry for goals. She goes herself, great little look. And then all she has to do is get her head up. She has Ashley Hatch right on top of the penalty spot, just slots it back for an open shot on goal when said sends it into the side netting. There's Martin the other way, fighting LaRue. Sydney holding. Doherty Howard into the box. The clearance, but not out of danger. Headed across by LaRue. Sullivan upfield, intended for Hatch. Orlando's back on it. Young's daughter. You basically have a 30 minute game when you're figuring stoppage time. Who's going to be the better side and maybe claim three points? That's when you have those opportunities that we've seen Trod Trinity Rodman have. You have to at least put one of them away because otherwise you allow for Orlando to stay involved in the game. They start to generate some more energy, especially being on the road, happy with a 0-0 tie so far in this game. As we mentioned the double switch coming up for Orlando. Ashley Hatch, or Ashley Sanchez, sorry, is about to come in as well for the Spirit. They may make another change as well. We saw Bigalski take off the warm up top as this ball is cleared out. We should see the changes now. Tori Penso says yes. So 21 and 23 coming in for Orlando. And the Spirit are going to make changes too. First two changes being made, Strom and McKernan for Orlando. Peterson and Riley are coming out of the game. So those will be the two changes made there. And then we are going to see Ashley Sanchez coming in, replacing Tara McEwen. Sanchez was leading the league in shots until this weekend. Now second in shots, but first in shots on target. Gelski is going to come in as well for Takarada. I have to think JP, those two subs for Orlando Pride, Becky Burley's side, wanting to get more energy on those flanks, getting higher up the field, a double swap with their outside backs. Fresh legs, we'll see what they do for both sides actually. Washington have now made four changes, two for Orlando. Houston. Going forward. See if Sanchez can combine now with both Rodman and Hatch. It's a terrific trio when they're all on their game. 
and Sanchez will give a different look to Washington. Won't look to get in behind nearly as much, but she will look to have those quick little interchange. Then it could pull out Orlando Pride's defense and then look to play in behind instead of just so direct to try to find Hatch or Trinity Rodman directly behind that back line of the Orlando Pride. Watching the NWSL here on CBS, 67th minute, no goals. Some opportunities for both teams. More of those, though, were in the first half of play. Both teams still trying to, I guess, find their rhythm here in the second half. The cutting ball from Marta finds Sydney LaRue. That's as deep as she's retrieved the ball all game. As Orlando gets ready to make potentially another change or two. Krieger long almost had LaRue. Applauded the effort. Acting coach Chris Ward, Becky Burley, interim coach on the other side. Both of those coaches wanted to give their players more role in the problem solving. They admit the players may make mistakes, but as Becky Burley said, how do those players respond after making those mistakes? Young's daughter helping with that turnover. Marta from Taylor. She'll have a go. And off the post it in. Marta with a moment of brilliance. Orlando leads. And what a fantastic strike from the Brazilian midfielder. Just needs a little bit of space to be able to unleash the strike to that far post. Gets her head up, sees that she has no pressure. No one closes her down. She gets her head up, takes it on 1v1, and gets it onto her favorite left foot. No one stays tight with her. Beats Andy Sullivan and just unleashes that far post strike. Aubrey Bledsoe does all she can to get across. Outstretched, but look at that. Just kisses off the inside of that far post. What a fantastic strike. And this is when those missed opportunities on the other end for the Washington Spirit come back to haunt you. Too many opportunities that they haven't been able to put away in just a moment of brilliance, like you said, JP, from Marta. Sometimes that's all it takes, right? In a game like this, that moment of brilliance. Marta has now scored eight goals against Washington. It's her second of the year. Took it upon herself to lead that charge instead of being the distributor. Taylor was the distributor and Marta was the finisher. And it's unfortunate for the Washington Spirit because they've done a lot right centrally, defensively, clogging up the midfield, forcing Orlando to go wide, making things predictable, and then Marta just getting herself enough room, enough separation to get past Andy Sullivan to set herself up for that left-footed strike. Orlando on the ball. Can they protect this lead or can they add to this lead with Taylor? JP coming into this game, you and I talked about really just no differences between these two teams, tight in the standings, going through some coaching changes in midseason. What does that look like? But the biggest difference between these two teams is the experience, the age. And we just saw that shine through. Marta, not a ton of opportunities herself in this game, but when she does have it, she takes that opportunity. And when it comes down to the wire late in these seasons, when you need to collect points, that's what you need. Your special player stepping up. Sanchez, nice back heel. Kuster, reverse, slightly behind. Possession kept into the box. Intended for Sanchez. Go! It's time! Who else but Ashley Hatch? And talk about both coaches looking for a reaction. What a response from the Washington Spirit. Just stays calm. This is the first type of ball that we've seen from the Washington Spirit. Just floated in. It forces Kylie Strom, the substitute, to have to come up with a play. She doesn't make it. Lands right to Ashley Hatch. And all she has to do is slot it home past Ashlyn Harris, just the inside of her foot. Unfortunate mistake by Strom. Just puts it right back into the path of the center striker for the Washington Spirit. So my question was answered, right? With Orlando, could they hold that lead? No. Now what happens? The game has opened up after the first goal. 
sometimes always the risk that you run by making the double substitution in those outside back positions, looking to get more energy higher up the field. But what does that cost you defensively? Peterson, a lot of experience throughout this season. Riley on the other side. Strong, just not the positioning that you want as an outside back. Have to flick it on out of danger, but puts it right back into the mix. And Ashley Hatch is not going to miss from that spot. Now in a three-way tie for the goal-scoring lead in the NWSL. That's a big goal for Washington to get themselves back into this game. A field, maybe for Taylor. Really great work from Emily Sana just to get herself in there at the last second. That looked like a really good touch from Jody Taylor to almost set herself up, up in the last minute. Emily Sonnet positioning is just spot on. Corner kick for Orlando. 73rd minute. One, one game now. Ball played toward the middle. Blutzer came up and grabbed it. The way this is opened up, we've got another maybe 20 minutes or so. And stoppage time. You think there's another goal in this one, at least. And these are the moments too where I feel the Washington Spirit can really start to push the pace a bit. You have Ashley Sanchez coming on. Yes, she isn't going to get in behind, but her playmaking ability. Good Taylor holding that ball well. Strong. It's blocked. Corner was not conceded, but Strong fights to get it back. Looking. Got a touch, not all cleared away by Sonnet. Turner up the middle. And that's well wide of Strom, who is not making that run. Over hit by Korniak. Korniak in a much deeper role than we saw at the beginning of the season. One of those players, when they were playing more direct, looking to find her aerial presence, looking to flick on. Told Becky Burley, though, she would prefer to play in that number six role, and it was just going to take time for her to be adjusted. More of that link player has a lot more tools than just the attacking presence in the air. Marta scored the opening goal, sends one in. She had LaRue open. The clearance by Houston. Settle at the halfway line by Orlando. Strom wide on this left side. First year player in NWSL, has experience in Europe. Turner. Ali Krieger. In the 75th minute. That's too long. And Tennis Sydney LaRue. Hatch. Off Houston. Collected. LaRue with that pass on the left side. Scramble for that ball. Timrak drives it across. That's late, but it's effective. Turn it. Quick shot taken is wide of Bledsoe. Korniak ended with that shot. That's 6-1, the tallest field player in this league. Out of the University of Colorado. 1-1 here, your goal scores Martha and Hatch. Just about two minutes apart. Oh, oh. Strom got a piece, not all, and then gets most of Rodman, who's down. Accidental, but still painful. Yeah, definitely looked as if Strom was coming in more aggressively, but both of those two players coming in with momentum. Just at the end, Strom not being able to slow herself down enough before she gets all of Trinity Rodman. Yellow card was just given to Strom. So that's two yellow cards in this game, one to Turner and one to Strom. Rodman back up on the feet. 76th minute, 1-1 one, one game. Two teams battling for important points 
We mentioned just a two-point lead for the Portland Thorns over the North Carolina Courage. Then the rest of the teams are in a bit of a scramble to see who's going to make the playoffs and who isn't. But there's a lot of games still left to play. So there's opportunity there for most of these other teams. And I think as what teams start to get all of their players back, regain that continuity with the internationals coming back from their break after the Olympics, we'll start to see some separation. Huge win, as we mentioned earlier, for North Carolina, 4-0, making a statement with their players returning, getting on the score sheet. On that right side, there's Rodman. Not the worst for wear. Gelski putting one up. Harris off the line to grab it and distribute it all in one motion. Finding Marta. Player down in the box for Orlando as the play goes up the field. It's Krieger. She's back up. Orlando and White on the ball. They scored first. They've been outshot by twice as many shots for the Washington Spirit. Flag goes up. Orlando offside, Jody Taylor. Hydration break, apparently our second one of this night. We take a break as well, coming right back after this break. Welcome back, everyone. 1-1 game here. Two nice goals. Uh, yeah, and the opening goal would be from Marta, the Brazilian striker, just getting a little bit of space here, separating herself from Andy Sullivan, and then look at that strike. Just unleashes it to the far post. It tucks it in just past the outstretch of Aubrey Bledsoe. But then it would be a great response just a couple minutes later from the Washington Spirit. It's Kelly O'Hara that starts this play. Once she gets it out wide, just lofts this ball in, puts Orlando Pride under some pressure, and then some misclearance by the substitute Strom that lands right to Ashley Hatch, and then this is the tap in for the center striker for the Spirit. Seventh goal of the year for Hatch. It's a big one. It got her team level. Back to live action after that hydration break. Pushed back by Rodman. Spirit at the halfway line, that's blocked. It's going to roll out for a Washington throw in. 80th minute. We went 68 minutes, really, without a goal, and then had two of them in the space of a couple of minutes. The Marta goal, exceptional. Sanchez knocked away. The Spirit throw in. Sanchez had started every game coming into this one. Earning minutes right now off the subs bench. Spirit Young Player of the Year one year ago. Should play it across. That's block. Look at that deft touch. Marta. The time she tried to do too much was dispossessed. Hatch. Sanchez. The cross. Missed. Secured. Korniak. And now the battle there. Orlando does not concede a corner. They'll give it a throw in. But that's good energy from the Washington Spirit right after the hydration break. A lot of pressure under the Orlando Prime defensively. Gelski with that cross. Pushed forward. Intended for Hatch. We've been talking Ashley Sanchez for more on Ashley. Here's Marissa. Now that this match is evened up, Washington will look towards forward Ashley Sanchez to create more goal scoring opportunities going forward. Washington's Chris Ward said Sanchez is a dangerous weapon for his team off the bench. He said her strengths really play well into how this match is playing out because not only could she provide smarter, crisper final passes in the final third, she could be very brave in transition as well. And is that that bravery right now that the Washington Spirit need? We talk about how important home points are going into this latter part of the season. The Washington Spirit have to be able to push the pace. They need to get a win here, three points. Orlando would be happy with a point on the road, especially in this humidity. It's going to be a free kick for Orlando coming up. Marta is over the ball. Come 
from long distance. The Brazilian is ready to dial it up. An inviting ball, but it's too close to Aubrey Bledsoe. In the 83rd minute, she'll start it out to O'Hara. O'Hara with a big switch to the feet of Sanchez. Kuster. Sanchez trying to slip that one through. He's behind Hatch. Orlando on the ball. Kind of think about risk reward here at this stage of the game. Laurie, especially for Orlando, like you said, the road point. They've got at least one. Well, and also the same though for the Washington Spirit. Just finding that balance of, of when to go direct, trying to push the pace. As you mentioned earlier, finding Ashley Sanchez as well in those little pockets, but not being exposed defensively. Martis pass, and then the flag went up anyway. Because at this stage, the last thing you want to do is give away a go-ahead goal for Orlando. Bigelski out of the University of Wisconsin. That pass not close enough to anyone in the blue and red. Krieger. Turner. Lando in their own half. Nothing on. Krieger will just keep possession. Cornea. Gains the halfway line. Slips it ahead, but it's picked. Sonnet almost picked up. Now it is. Sydney LaRue. Back towards McLaren. Krieger. Marta. The flick. Straw makes the run. Rodman on the chase. Shoulder to shoulder and then some. It's going to be rolled in the corner. Up for Orlando. Yeah, and I thought that last touch though was off of Strom, both going shoulder to shoulder. And that's the argument that Trinity Rodman is making as well. Nonetheless, Pinzo's pointing to the corner flag. Ali Krieger is going to be the one to take this one. Fourth one for Orlando. Marta has been taking them. Krieger. She'll drive one to the middle. He's headed awkwardly wide. Cornea got to that ball. On the left, the Spirit picked off and played back to Orlando territory. Turn in. There's Krieger, who's still up there from taking that corner. Hatch into the middle. Spirit under some pressure. Sullivan, calm with the ball, draws the foul. Good recognition, though, from Andy Sullivan to see where the space is, forcing the foul and sending LaRue to bring her down. Doesn't have any options to pass, goes herself. Sullivan will push it up. That's blocked. Houston will get it. Big switch on the left side. O'Hara was making the run. In that collision. And O'Hara is going to be called for the foul. Orlando on it. 87th minute. 1-1 one, one game. Cut to the right. Numbers forward in white. Played across. And missed the target. But Orlando was threatening. Well, and it's a good little pocket of space for Erica Timrak to find herself in. Loads of space to be able to get her head up. Kelly O'Hare is the one that had pushed forward, left that space in behind her, available for Timrak to make the run into. Connection on both sides of the ball, though, for 
Washington Spirit and Orlando Pride have to be better, finding themselves free in some spaces and just the execution, the final pass just not there for either side. And we'll get a corner out of this. 88th minute, set pieces can be that great equalizer. When you're not scoring goals during the run of play, O'Hara is going to help out at the near post. Fifth one. This time Marta is back to take it. She'll drive it to the middle. One flick. Sanchez. Houston. Held that ball well. Ashton Harris has to sprint back. Rodman on the right by herself at the moment. One against two. Rodman waits. Drops it back. Driven by Sanchez. What a goal! Two on Spirit. decision from Trinity Rodman this time gets her head up sees it's a mismatch in terms of numbers around the ball looks to find Ashley Sanchez who just works her magic cuts to the left cuts to the right gets herself a little bit of time and then look at that finish upper 90 pass Ash Ashlyn Harris for the go-ahead goal for the substitute and after a few missed opportunities from Trinity Rodman throughout this game she makes the right decision in the waning minutes to put her team up. Fourth goal of the season for Ashley Sanchez. Fifth in all competitions. Four of those, including that one, on Rodman assists. Now that's the go-ahead goal with very little time remaining. Big collision there. Foul goes against Sanchez. So Orlando, as hard as they played and as well as they played at times, now find themselves with no points, barring a late goal here. Trinity Rodman just continuing. Headed up the middle. Settled, now played wide right. That's cleared away. we told it's going to be four minutes of stoppage. This ball is played in. Heavy on the touch. It's a corner kick, though, is deflected. But Trinity Rodman throughout this game showing why she's such a special talent, working hard defensively for a team, but then when necessary, continuously being that outlet going forward. Marta, far side, in swinger, headed down, kept in, and it falls the other way. Orlando will keep it alive. Marta. It's blocked. It comes out. Young's still here. That's blocked as well. Orlando desperately trying to get that equalizing goal in the first minute of stoppage time. Four to be played. That one overhit will allow Washington to kill off some of this clock. Yeah, it looks like they are going to make a substitution just to continue to kill off some of the clock, but really good into this match for the Washington Spirit. Now it'll be about closing it out for this young side about how important, though, these home points are, JP, and this could be a massive turning point for this young squad and for Chris Ward, who's just taken over in his second game. Washington was looking like they were going to make one final switch. Aylmer was by the fourth official, now getting a refreshment break for coming on potentially. We'll see how this one goes. We're already in the second minute of stoppage time. Time for Orlando to get a crack at an equalizer. Strong pocket pick. The Sanchez pass. Robin had a reach behind. It's one against three. Make it one against four. Thought you saw Harris off of the line. Always oh, going to be tough to beat Ashton Harris from that that angle in that depth. But what I love about Ashley Sanchez is just her passes that invite. She's 
not going to go long, knowing where the space is. Just plays it short, forces Trini Rodman to come back to that ball and help keep possession. Ball deflects out for an Orlando throw in. In the third minute, a minimum of four. It's supposed to buy the fourth official. Strom's throw in, short. Young's daughter, back for Strom, back to Gunny. Right into the middle, look was for Taylor, that's cleared away. Look at how far off the line Ashton Harris is. She has that length of clock, knows time is running out, sending it long. Wanted Horniak. Let's her just hang on for a while, as long as she can without getting carded. Sometimes you take that card, you, unless you're in yellow card jeopardy. She's just getting a warning from Tori Penso. Put that ball in. Elmer is still up by the fourth official, but may not get to come in. We're already in the fourth minute. No real stoppage to allow for the change. Comes back to Harrison Gold. Time running out, less than a minute to go. Krieger. Speed ahead, pushing it right. McLaren inside. Maybe a half minute or so left. Long for Taylor. First ball one. Second is one as well. That time by Sanchez. Cleared it up. Headed down by Rodman. Turner. Can't be much left. Ball played forward. Intended for Taylor. It will bounce. Bledsoe. Just pick it up. Maybe kill the rest of the time. This could be a really good turning point, though, as well for the Orlando Pride. Just look to see if they can have that balance between keeping possession, not being as direct, but also utilizing the strength of this team. We talked about Sid LaRue not being that impactful in this game. How do you get her more involved and more of a threat going forward? Well, that's it. They couldn't make that last change, but they didn't have to. Washington Spirit got a nice win at home. Two to one, first under acting head coach Chris Ward. And this is exactly though what you want from your substitutes. Ashley Sanchez coming in, finding a little bit of gap in space. Good recognition from Trini Rodman on the assist. And then Ashley Sanchez doing the rest to put her team up. Let's take a look at our Budweiser player of the match. It's a good look at the goal. Trinity Rodman just finding her teammate on top and then Excellent strike from the young striker coming in, wiggling her way past the opposition of Orlando Pride. It buys herself a little bit of time right on top of the box and couldn't find better placement than that for the 2 1 go ahead goal. Washington Spirit, three big points in the standing, so they move now up into fourth place in a very competitive group. Coming up Wednesday, a big one, right? because you've got Olivia Moultrie, you've seen her play, only 15, she's already scored one goal, granted it was not in league play, going up against Carly Lloyd, one of Carly's final games. In Portland, coming off of that big victory in the, against Lyon last night in the WICC, and they'll be facing Carly Lloyd and the Gotham, who are just right behind them in the standings, looking to solidify their place in the playoffs as well. Another important match coming up midweek. Yeah, get some rest on the East Coast, that's a 10.30 Eastern time start. Sanchez and company coming away with a very big win at home today. And that'll do it for us from our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. Washington Spirit get a 2-1 to -one win over the Orlando Pride. For Lori Lindsay, Marissa Pilla, and our entire crew, I'm J.P. Della Kemba. We say so long from Washington, D.C. We now send you to Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. So long, everyone.